Topology is the study of continuous deformations of mathematical objects and the properties that are preserved under these continuous deformations. In topology, the concepts of distance and length are almost non-existent. The only thing that remains is the idea of closeness. In this video, you'll understand the basic ideas of topological spaces. You'll also see how and why mathematicians chose to abstract the idea of distance while preserving the idea of closeness. Before we understand topology, we must first ask, what is a space? The inhabitants of a space can be any abstract mathematical object, but we will view them as points. To make this collection of points into a space, they must have some underlying geometric structure. There are many kinds of spaces. For instance, there are vector spaces in which the objects are vectors which form a rigid linear structure. There are also metric spaces in which any two points have a precise distance. The subject of this video are topological spaces, where the only thing that matters is the shape of the space. The method that mathematicians use to define abstract topological spaces is through the means of open sets. The idea of open sets originates from the real number line. On this line, every point represents a unique number, positive or negative, rational or irrational. On this line, you can specify the distance between any two points. Open sets are a direct generalization of the open interval which consists of all the points in between the two endpoints. Notice that A and B, the two endpoints, are not included in the set. The key feature of open intervals is that every point has a smaller open interval contained inside the larger one. This happens regardless of the point that is picked. So the points can be infinitely close to the edge. Contrast this with the closed interval, which includes the endpoints A and B. If we choose the endpoint B, no matter what open interval we take around this point, there is always a portion on the right that is outside of our closed interval, no matter how small we shrink it. Intuitively, one can view an open interval as having the property that every point inside the interval has a little bit of wiggle room in which it can move around and stay inside the interval. To see why these open intervals are useful, let's consider these three points. We'll construct a green interval around the green point. As we shrink the interval, eventually we notice that the red point is no longer in these intervals, but the blue point remains inside them. What we've just done is abstracted the idea of distance. We described the geometric relation that two points are close without ever alluding to the idea of distance. To define topological spaces, instead of using a precise distance, we use abstract open sets to define a loose relationship of closeness between points. This allows us to view two spaces as equivalent if there is a continuous deformation between the two spaces. Now we will formally define a topological space. We first begin with the set of points we want to put some sort of structure on. This set of points we will call X. Now we take subsets of X and we will declare some of them to be open. This is what we call a topology on X. So, a topological space is X together with a topology on it. Intuitively, you can think of the open sets as defining a relationship of closeness between the points. The closer they are, the more open sets they will have in common. So we've just defined a relationship with no distance and no size. These two lines may have different sizes, but you can stretch them continuously so that they have the same size. 
meaning they're topologically equivalent. The same goes for these shapes. We can morph them however we want, but topologically, they are just circles. One application of topology is Brouwer's fixed point theorem. This theorem states that any continuous motion of points within a disk will always have a fixed point. That's a point whose position remains unchanged after the continuous motion. This theorem has many applications in aerodynamics and fluid dynamics. For instance, this theorem means that when you stir a cup of coffee, there will always be one molecule whose position remains unchanged after you stir it. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.